Now what we have to do is, guys, we have to calculate S F O C. Four stroke is. The following video is a part of the Dreamer package. In case you find the video helpful and want to watch more such videos like difference between IHP, BHP, and SHP, cooling water system on IC engines, why performance on engines should be taken on ship, two-stroke engine lubrication, four-stroke engine lubrication. Find the link of the Dreamer package in the description box below. Jai Matari guys, let's calculate power for a two-stroke engine. When I talk about power, again guys, before going through this unit, please go through my section of that power and atmospheric pressure which I had made you study earlier. Power is work done upon time. Work done is force into displacement. upon time let me draw this is my exhaust valve and say over here is my piston scavenge ports are over here and the liner is set in here okay now power is equal to force is pressure into area into displacement upon time now when I talk about this area this area is the area of the liner that is if the bore of the liner is diameter D then area will be pi by 4 d square so you know what is a bore bore is the diameter of the liner okay so area becomes pi by 4 d square what is displacement is the distance traveled by piston from bdc to when it reaches tdc suppose that bdc piston is at over here and when it reaches tdc it reaches over here so this is the displacement and it is also called stroke length so, it is denoted by L in meters, okay? Area is also in meters. So, now power becomes pressure into area is pi by 4 d square into L upon time. Say one second, okay? I will take it at one second. Clear? Now what is pressure over here? Pressure is the gas pressure or the after explosion whatever pressure is acting on the piston downwards. So this pressure is minimum when, at the, when the piston is at VDC and maximum when the piston is at VDC. But understand one thing that your pressure is changing throughout the cycle when piston moves from here it starts increasing and then again it starts decreasing right so basically your this pressure is not constant it is changing throughout so you need an average pressure which is acting throughout the cycle because over here it is say 1 bar or 2 bars and over here it is 100 bars so it reaches from 2 to 100 and then again from 100 to 2 so you need a pressure which is constant throughout the cycle and you have to calculate that so we will calculate that i will show you the method but that is called mean pressure p mean average pressure into pi by 4 d square into l upon say time which i'll take as one second now let's just forget about p mean and let's just talk about time now suppose your engine is running at 60 revolutions per minute. Understand one thing guys that power is being generated 
when explosion takes place, right? So in every revolution, each unit is generating power once. When uh, in a two-stroke engine, when an engine rotates one RPM, in that one RPM, all the units have fired once. Right? So that means you say, in an, if it has got 60 revolutions per minute, minute, that means if the propeller is running at say 60 revolutions per minute, that means one revolution per second, that means to say each unit is generating power just once. So that means per second means nothing will come over here. This is L. But suppose your engine is running at 120 revolutions per minute. That means 2 revolutions per second. This means to say in one second each unit is firing twice. That means to say in one second each unit is developing twice the power. So this should be multiplied by 2 in that case. This means that power is P mean into pi by 4 d square into L into number of revolutions per second. Right guys? So, because we need time per second, this is how we get power in watts and if you divide it by 1000 you get in kilowatt you divide it by 746 you get in brake horsepower bhp copy it guys so this is something we have to know now the only thing that is remaining we do not know is how do we calculate P mean? Right? Jai uh, Matadi guys. There are two curves that I made over here. Now you guys must might find it here. It is not written. Yes, it is written. But again, I would say when if at in the interview, see this these questions are not going to come in your uh, online test for sure. But in case if it comes in interview, read carefully. Matlab, walk carefully ke what you are going to say. Either be hundred percent sure, or say clearly, sir. This much I know. I really do not know whether it is correct or not. Because as a chief engineer, it has taken me years to get this knowledge. So it is not possible for a person who is a mechanical engineering to have all those things. Moreover, I know these things. I have done these things practically. So knowledge is different. So no worries. Just know this can become your passing question to answer. So try to understand that way. Okay. I have got this is a draw card. And this is a power card. Now when I talk about power card, you know power is power is work done upon time. And in the PV curve, work done is the area inside this curve. That is the work done. Okay, fine. Now, out here, when I talk about power card, again we connect the indicator clock and we take there is a thread which is moving because we want this to be in sync with the engine. Over here, engine is at below the scavenge ports, it starts moving up, pressure starts increasing, reaches TDC, maximum pressure, and then after that, combustion has taken place out here and then it starts dropping also. It is a bit like banana ship, not a very good diagram again. But as a lever, I am trying to explain you. So over here, your draw card, your sorry, your over here, your indicator uh, instrument is connected to a cam below. To a cam, it is a separate cam fitted. Like say, uh, this is your engine again. This is your this is your indicator cock. 
Now this indicator cock out here is connected to a separate cam. So when you connect it over here, when this cam moves up and down, this is not the camshaft with which your fuel pumps and exhaust valves are connected. A separate cam is there. So when this rotates, it immediately moves along with as the piston is moving up and down in sync with that. So you get this diagram. Clear? Fine. So now when you get this diagram, what you have to do is over here, I hope you remember I did not get P mean. So over here I need P mean. So how I get P mean is I say I calculate this area and divided by the length of this curve. Area of curve divided by the length of the curve. Say this area is X. Okay. If I divide by this, I get a pressure P mean over here, which will be going to the same length like this. And if now this becomes a rectangle, if I calculate the area of this curve, it will also be X. So Vauden will be the same. But I have got my constant pressure which is going to act throughout the cycle. And I put it over here in bars. So this is how I get my power. Okay guys. Now when I talk about this draw card. This is not over here. In this case this thread is not connected to the cam. It is in your hand. And you do it yourself. This, is, this comes with a lot of practice guys. And you calculate. Okay now the engine is coming up. I have to calculate something like this. And you get this curve like this. Now. Not a lot of importance what I talked about earlier, how we do this, how we connect this indicator card. But if at all you can explain this, you can make this diagram. You can make this diagram. And you can tell me what is this, what is this. Okay, how you get P mean is more than sufficient guys. That is more than sufficient. Okay. So out here, see what is happening. Engine is going up. Engine is going up. Engine is, air is getting compressed. Out here, this is the maximum pressure that I get over here. This is called compression pressure. This is called P compression. Okay, because over till over here, air is being compressed. Now you see over here the pressure drops slightly. Why? Because this is the time when fuel has been injected in. Now once the fuel goes in, fuel is slightly cooler than the air inside, so the pressure drops a little. Over here, pressure drops and suddenly combustion boom, takes place and the pressure immediately starts rising. Right? And you get the maximum pressure over here which is called P max. And after that, the pressure starts reducing. Sometimes from this curve also we can make out whether the engine is running properly or not. Now suppose you have got a curve, ideally it should be like this, but you get a curve which is like this. So basically P compression and P max is less. But out here you see P compression is less, that is why P max is less. We, first of all, this has got less now. After that, fuel is being injected. If this is less, automatically this is going to be less. Now, P compression is less. That means my air is not developing that much pressure when it is being compressed. So, maybe scavenger pressure is less. Maybe air inside coming is less. Maybe my piston rings are broken and my, my piston rings are broken and when I am compressing it, air is leaking down below over here. Maybe my Exhaust valve is leaking slightly and air is going out. That can be the problem. Now suppose you get a curve.
like this same peak compression but your p max has reduced that means till compression side till air side everything was okay but now when fuel is entered pressure is not developing something can be wrong with the fuel pump is the fuel of good quality okay let me check off other units as well because the same fuel is going to all the units if all the units p max is coming less that means problem is with common that is with the fuel but if for one unit it is a problem that means maybe the problem with the fuel injection pump maybe the problem with this unit's fuel wall maybe the problem with this fuel in, fuel uh, fuel units fuel nozzle of the fuel wall so you have to find out and this is also this also gives you an indication clear now i forgot to tell you one thing guys how do we calculate this area and we calculate this area by a device called planimeter now this is something that you have to remember if at all you make this diagram and you tell me sir i have to calculate p mean so i know i get a power card like this so i need a constant pressure because the pressure is changing throughout the cycle so i will calculate this area and divide by the length i will get p mean so you say how do you calculate the area you say by a device called planimeter sir but this is only how this is this much is only what i know sir not much okay clear this is more than sufficient if at all you want to tell now let me talk about four stroke engine power how to calculate okay wait so now in a two stroke engine we know that power is p mean into pi by 4 d square into l into n by 60 number of revolutions per second now what happens is in a two stroke engine for one crankshaft rotation every unit is firing once but when it comes to four stroke engine for every unit for every revolution each unit is firing half time right so what happens is in case of power this is two stroke in case of power four stroke it becomes p mean into pi by 4 d square into l into n by 60 into 2 that means it becomes half clear guys now this is something important for you guys to know as well now another thing is see the challenge is going to be in a four stroke engine now let me compare main engine which is a two stroke and auxiliary engine which is a four stroke when i talk about on ship yes main engine power is calculated like this but these days we do not use this tedious method of doing it with the indicator diagram everything everything is electronic these days so we use a device called pmi it is an electronic device you take it over here a sensor is there you fit that sensor on the each units indicator cog and it will automatically calculate p mean Uh, power everything it will calculate itself and you just have to feed the readings so things have become very easy sometimes these pmi can be used in some cases on the auxiliary engines as well automatically you get okay in now in case of auxiliary engines the problem that we get is it has got a higher rpm say main engine is rotating at say 120 rpm 140 rpm on the other hand auxiliary engine is rotating at 700 rpm 900 rpm and most important the stroke length is small main engine is a two stroke engine going like this and coming up four stroke is simple so getting a a power card becomes difficult so out there what we do is in auxiliary engine cases 
either company should provide us with this electronic PMI where we can get everything exact and in case they have not done that then in that case what we do is we calculate the power uh, sorry peak pressure developed by the auxiliary engine so what we do is we connect an instrument which has got a gauge fitted over here okay so it has got a piston over here so when I make suppose this is the indicator cog this is threaded so I put a device over here like this and I put a piston over here like this which is moving up and down I put a spring pressure over here and over here say I connect a pressure gauge so when this piston moves up and down along with there is this pressure gauge reading will move up and down so this pressure gauge reading will show us okay inside pressure is 110 bars inside pressure is 120 bars that is P max so in case of generators we run it at the 85% load say we get all the P max that is the maximum pressure being generated inside and we know one thing if maximum pressure generated inside is same that means your P compression is also going to be the same and you see all the units exhaust temperatures cooling water temperatures new ball pressures and then you get a very good idea that my engine is running in good shape clear guys this is important now when we calculate power once we have got power the power we get in kilowatt right now let's come back to two stroke engines okay we have got power we have calculated in kilowatts now what we do is we run this engine for one hour what we do we run this engine for one hour at this rpm or i will to set higher load where we take the performance clear now what we have to do is guys we have to calculate SFOC which is called specific fuel oil consumption see we want to know that how much gram of fuel are we burning to get this much energy and energy is kilowatt into r kilowatt r right so SFOC is grams per kilowatt hour so how we do that when we run this engine for one hour and we get the power in the meantime we also get the flow meter readings so we know okay fuel has the fuel burnt has been say one meter cube we know the density of the fuel yes so can we if we know this volume and we know density can we know the mass yes can we get that mass in grams? Yes, we get this mass in say kg. We multiply it by 1000. We get that mass in grams. And then we divide it by this power, kilowatt. R remains the same. And that is how we get this SFOC. And this SFOC when we calculate and we compare it with previous readings and with the readings when our engine was new. And that is how we get a very good idea how our engine is performing. Copy it guys. Now this was very important for you to remember. Copy it. Thank you very much. If you found the video helpful, do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel. To watch more such videos, you can find the link of the Dreamers package in the description box below. Thank you.